ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a brand new episode of the Division Z podcast. My name is Jason. And I am Kay Cosmic, without the face cam. Without the face cam, <laughs> like an OG episode. Uh, like an OG we missed episode. you last week, dude. Uh, yeah, so I mean, I'll, I'll explain. I'll explain. Um, I'm moving house. Things are things are complicated. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm in the process of moving. Hopefully, by the end of the next week, we'll be back to normal, and you won't be seeing my the background of my room right now. And honestly, that's quite sad. Like I, I've been at this house for like 12 years or so, mm -hmm. and all my main zombie memories are, are in this room. And obviously, I'm leaving that behind to go to my new place. So I mean, it's mm -hmm. gonna be an absolute actual gaming room, but like. I don't know. I kind of reminisce about like, oh, this is where I started playing zombies and all that. I know it sounds pretty stupid. I know. No, <laughs> no, 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 dude. I get you, man. Nostalgia, yeah. like a place you grew up, and like yeah. I, I feel it, man. I get, I get where you're coming from. Like you know, a lot of, like you know, even like when like the Wi-Fi up here, up where I am, is really bad. Mm -hmm. And um, like even like the nostalgia of that, and you know, like <laughs> two barring in Black Ops Three multiplayer, even uh... going from zombies or playing zombies over multiplayer because of the connection mm. and stuff but no the reason you missed me last week is because i'm in the in the process of getting a house hopefully next week everything should be sorted and that is why we don't have a face cam because i put the camera cable in a bag and yeah it's at my new house so it's <laughs> you know sitting what? there so <laughs> it's all right it's all right you know it's uh we're here we're gonna talk about stuff and uh you know it's all good um absolutely you know, glad to hear that you're uh, starting the next chapter of your life and uh I'm, i really hope nothing but for the best for you man i think it's going to be really great for you thank you thank you and i think it gives i don't know us for the podcast a little bit more opportunity and stuff that i'm not limited to there we I, go. I can see potentially a lot of good things happening as well for everything like youtube related for me there um, you go man just always yeah, think yeah, about it positively more control more control more you know more stuff I can like kind of utilize. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be good. It's going to be fun. And I, I'm, I'm really excited for it. So. Awesome, man. Well, with that well, said, I absolutely. think it's time we jump into the first topic of the day, which is going to be operation Monarch, the Godzilla versus King Kong event in Warzone on Caldera. Um, you know, it's not a bad event. I think the majority of the people out there in the Call of Duty community don't like this. Mm -hmm. um, and I think I'm definitely in the minority of the minority of people where I don't think it's necessarily bad, but I don't necessarily think it's like the greatest mm -hmm. thing in the world ever. It does have its fun moments. Yeah. And like, it, it's just all right. It's all right. It's mm -hmm. not, you know, it's, you know what I mean? So I think the event itself is actually, you know, it's all right. I know when you're actually playing it, there's not much going on. Godzilla is, you know, is walking about shooting lasers. King Kong mm -hmm. is throwing rocks at people. It's pretty crazy. Um, I mean, they don't fight. And I think, <clears throat> I think one of the things with Godzilla and King Kong is that they're natural enemies. You expect them to, you know, have a little bit of a fight. And uh, they don't right. do it in this. And, you know, people have been trying to get them to interact with each other. Yeah. And it just doesn't seem to want to work. Like, you throw a rock, you can't really throw rocks at Godzilla because he's out of nope. range and, you know, vice versa sort of thing. Um, I think it's the case where and <laughs> this is kind of like the story of Vanguard's life, to be honest, where the trailer looks a lot cooler than the actual event. Looking at Vanguard zombies, looking at Vanguard yeah. multiplayer, looking at Vanguard campaign. It looks a lot cooler than it actually is. And it's not bad what it is. But like if you just showed gameplay and that was it, not like cool, like cinematic. I don't know why they would suggest that the, the event had more going on if there isn't. But I personally think there's more to it. Obviously, we have the Mecha Godzilla skin. Mm -hmm. uh, Mechazilla is that Mecha Godzilla? I, I, yeah, he's called whatever he's called, right? We have his skin, right. and I know there's a lot of rumors going around that there's a lot going on at that facility in the island as well, and they think that he's underground, which I'm pretty sure that happens in the movie in its own like sort of canon. Okay. Like they're working on they're, they're working on building him whilst you know Godzilla and King Kong are fighting. Interesting. Um, I think there's a lot more. I know Godzilla's axe is in the game, but. Nothing's really happened with that yet, has it? Yeah, the King Kong axe is um, <clears throat> definitely a weird addition to the to the map because not it, it doesn't really do anything. Um, when we were playing on stream, trying to figure <clears throat> out, okay, maybe if we send King Kong over there and he he could pick up his axe and like use it, but he he doesn't do anything. Um, <clears throat> like back what you were saying about yeah, try to use Godzilla's laser beam against <clears throat> King Kong, nothing happens. They don't do damage to each other, and you know. I don't know. I feel like that's a super missed opportunity there because it, it, it would just make sense gameplay wise too. Because for those of you who might not know, yeah, 
in the in the mode itself you have a thing called titan frenzy and in titan frenzy you have to deal a lot of damage to the monsters and the more damage you do you might be able to get some kind of good reward depending on what place you earn how much damage you've done so i feel like if you were to save a scream device for the titan frenzy to throw a rocket godzilla or something you would be able to do a lot more damage or something like that yeah. i don't mm -hmm. know just from a gameplay yeah. perspective i feel like that could have been really interesting but they just didn't go for it um but I guess that's the one thing that I think the event does have going for it is the gameplay. I think the uh, the whole idea with the Scream device and what they did basically bringing back a power grab with the rewards on the side of your screen, depending on how yeah. much damage you do. I think that's cool. I think that's a really cool addition. You get heavy weapon crates and you have to like really earn your loadout instead of just collect a bunch of money and then you get a loadout. Um, I think there are some good gameplay mechanics in this. And even using Godzilla and King Kong to your advantage can be uh, can be fun. But you know, other than that, you know, it's just pretty basic I resurgence. Think, you know, it's. I mean, when you're when you're actually trying to use them, they're a bit awkward to use. I found uh, not not Sometimes. awkward, but you know, you know, you want to actually do something with them, like kill people. Hmm. I don't know. I think they're I think they're cool, and obviously, you know, the event itself is cool. That's like the yeah. main thing I have to say about it. It's like a fun event. You know, um, it's super. You know, it's enjoyable to a certain extent. But again, it kind of goes back to that trailer where we see them almost fighting. So right. it leads me to suggest there's more. And I don't know why they threw on his axe if they weren't going to do anything with him. Because the axe was like, I, I don't know much about the lore before the movies, but I me think neither. the axe was kind of like the, um, is it MacDuffin? Is that what it's called? It's like the. A, a what? Mac, MacDuffin. I'm pretty sure that's what it's called. Oh, you know, MacGuffin. You know, I, MacGuffin. That's it. MacDuffin. Why did I say MacDuffin? Not Duff from The Simpsons. You know, the, the, uh... <laughs> yeah, duff, duff. Get get Duff. You know that guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Get the get the <laughs> McDuffie or whatever. The... <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but um, yeah. I'm pretty sure the reason they had that axe in the movie originally is because they're like, okay, King Kong's just a giant like monkey. He's not gonna be able to fight a radioactive lizard. Mm. You know, who's like taller than him and all that. So they had the axe as like a weapon that could kill him. But in the movie, um, spoilers by the way. Um, I'm pretty sure the Godzilla's X-ray thing ignites with the axe and it makes the axe super overpowered um, oh. to beat Mecha Godzilla. So like ah. I don't know, it's just kind of weird that it's just like there. Like I mean, you know I mean? could they I potentially don't... recreate the movie scene? Maybe. I mean, I don't. But even here's the thing, right? You know if that happens, mm -hmm. are are people going to be bothered? Like, are people going to be like, oh my god, this is sick? Like, it, so if they fight, it'll be cool, right? But I don't know. I think, it'll be like a, I think it'll be like a one and done thing. Oh, I, for sure. Honestly, no, for like, yeah, a hundred percent. Like, and I know that's like you know in game events, looking at Fortnite and stuff. But it normally is a one like time thing. Yeah. But like, I think it'll happen, and people will just be like, "Oh, that was fine." Because <laughs> yeah, you know, that was fine. Whatever. <laughs> it's more your like, whether you set it off, set it, set this off if there even is anything, or mm. it's like something that just naturally will occur if they take steps. Because I obviously they haven't. They haven't like said there's more to it, have they? They've just kind of like no, the they just kind of yeah, they just released yeah. it, released all the challenges, and I've added everybody. I mean, here here's the thing: I I would like for there to be more to it, like have that Mecha Godzilla kind of a thing, and then they have to team up or whatever to fight Mecha Godzilla. Like that'd be cool or whatever. I I don't know. I just I have a slight I'm, suspicion that this I, is it. Like I, 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 I just I'm, have a feeling that this is it. And then Kong's yeah. axe in the map is just kind of an aesthetic thing just to make like a it, reference or a callback to be like, Oh look, it's the thing. Or, the movie. or maybe it's because you can get the, um, you can get his axe as a weapon. Can't you? Right. The axe it, is a uh, blueprint for, yeah, I would assume the ice axe. Cause you can throw it yeah. right for the, so maybe it's bundle. like, Oh, you like God, Godzilla. you like King Kong's giant axe. Well, yep. you can have that too for twenty four dollars, <laughs> right? Two thousand four hundred god points for the small price. Which but, you know, uh, that's the one. I think that's the one takeaway that Activision is hoping to get out of this event is the bundle sales. Because yeah. I mean, you know, so many people like King Kong and Godzilla, and you know, it's it's there's still there's a big fan base there. So I feel like <laughs> I feel that's the big takeaway from this event, and that's why I really don't think there's going to be more happening. Even though I'd like for there to have more events and more whatever happening with all this, yeah. because you know, you add these giant monsters to the game, and the update itself was like over forty freaking gigabytes to download. You know, so it's one of those things where you you put so much of this this effort into it you want to see more you know you want to see more and and yeah instead instead of like a two-week game mode because right now 
uh, Operation Monarch is set, set to be only a LTM for two weeks. Two weeks! Like, you would think maybe this would last for the rest of Season 3, since they put so much work into this marketing That's for so it, but average, like... Yeah, exactly. I don't know, it just seems really weird. So to me, the, the thing that Activision is going to derive from this is bundle sales, and if they have good bundle sales on this crossover, then I would say expect more crossovers from Modern Warfare 2. Yeah, um... Yeah, like you say, it's like they've spent so much time marketing the event. You'd think they'd kind of make it last a bit longer. Yeah. Even if it was just like its own game mode and it was kind of like hidden away, you could like access it. But like, I don't know. Obviously, like the game mode as well, it seems like there was a fair chunk of work put into it for what it is again. Like, I'm sure right. it wasn't like easy setting stuff up. So I think, I think again, we can kind of come back to Fortnite and look at that game and how like it did its timed events and you know sure. it ended after a certain point but i think fortnite was kind of different in a way where um where it the obviously the map changed as time progressed and i think the war mm -hmm. zone in general things like that can happen and obviously we get new maps as we've seen going from you know for dance pacific, pacific but yeah. um like I, I don't think the maps change enough and not enough story stuff happens in war zone and that affects the actual gameplay itself for I don't for it to warrant it. I don't know. I kind of which, went on a tangent here, but like it, you get it, you kinda of get what I mean. Which is an interesting point that you that you bring up here that I think this really shows you where we are as the state of just Call of Duty and, and the community and where you know priorities are here. Cause I think with what happened with Cold War and the story that Treyarch added to Warzone in this overlapping timeline between all the games now, I think they really had something interesting there. Vanguard yeah. comes out, and this is all just filler. This is all just completely filler, and nothing is really happening, you know? I, I, we've, we've talked about this before on the show, where the post-launch, post-launch Vanguard storyline, I'm using that in quotations because it's not a storyline really i mean it's just butcher no, narrating no. narrating one-off stories about how they fought nazis around the world right um you know it's just, it's really just filler content right now the real story right now is with mason and adler and all them in the bunker listening to butcher's story and what's happening in 1984 so it's just really unfortunate that yeah you have a good point there with how the storyline means almost nothing right now in Vanguard, that's not where Activision's focus is right now. Their focus is not to make a cohesive storyline so that all of their games cross over. They want mm -hmm. just more money from bundles, which I understand it's a lucrative business strategy, and they profit immensely from these kinds of bundles, and I, I understand why their focus is there. But it still is just unfortunate that one thing has been placed on the back burner. We, I don't know why we couldn't have both, to be honest with you. I mean... it. I don't know. Yeah, yeah I mean, like have we've... the King Kong event, have its own separate thing, but then also continue the story. Like at the beginning of season three, you had this new strike team. I literally forgot their name already. And it's like, oh, yeah, they found the Nebula 5 gas thing. And then boom, Godzilla King Kong. What? <laughs> like, yeah, we it, ju we just, it was yeah, weird. It's... It was really weird. And they made it look like Godzilla and King Kong were canon too because of what's happening, which then also makes me think that this strike team is, aren't even like real characters in the storyline. It's like, like what's they happening? Need a, they need like, a fucking reboot. <laughs> like, what's happening? Like, what, they... here's, what's, here's what's dumb about it. This is supposed to be the reboot. That's what's stupid about this. Obviously, right? Like, they're, it's supposed to be like, this is the big, like, all oh, connect on the universes, but like, Maybe as an idea that was better on paper. I mean, going from Modern Warfare to Cold War, it worked. I don't know. Yeah. I think it's because they were competent writing. But Sledgehammer yeah, just no, like, you're right, yeah. shit the shit the bed like with their <laughs> with their story and where they're yeah. kind of going. And I know I know like studios have different ideas and that's all fine on that. But I mean, I think Modern Warfare's campaign and Cold War's campaign were great. I think they're really good stories. And then Vanguard mm. comes out. And it's not like Sledgehammer can't make good campaigns. I think Advanced Warfare is one of the most like movie like campaigns and the cutscenes are gorgeous. And I'm actually like I I, I enjoy the story of Advanced Warfare. Mm -hmm. And even for World War II is like, you know, your kind of like, you know, generic World War II story where like, oh yeah, we got fight the Nazis and you got, we got, mm -hmm. got fight the Nazis. You know, come on guys, you know, it's it's still a fun game. And it adds a lot like, of new features and like it's it's a good good story, right? Not great, mm -hmm. but good. Then, as we talked about before, like even like with Vanguard coming out and having the campaign in that game, it's not like the campaign's anything special. And with the story yeah. going forward with the multiplayer, it's like, man, I couldn't even tell you 
what the fuck's going on. Like they right. hit towards what was it? Nova Nova Five at the end of the game was it? Was it Nova well, the, Five? Uh, well, at the end of Vanguard, you have the um, uh, at the end of the storyline, they have their like documents that they find on the plane yeah. or whatever, and they're like, oh yeah, Project Ether, you know, which basically confirms the zombies crossover. Uh, you know, Nebula Five. Nebula and, Five. That's like, it. Like okay. I hate to harken back to this, but I, I'm genuinely confused as to why they can't just use Nova Six. Like I'm genuinely confused. Like, it's because it, like, is Sledgehammer it's trying because to be like, reboot. like Sledgehammer's trying to use. Well, no, it's not even because it's a reboot. Literally, Stitch from last year was was said to ma he manufactured Nova Six at Rebirth Island. So Nova Six it's is fucking canon in the storyline guess, guess what guess what it's because uh. it's a reboot it's because it's a reboot no i mean i i, I cause me. <laughs> listen listen right listen i am um, man listen a lot of things don't actually make sense and again i i, I mean we we're both excited for it when we like found mm -hmm. out that the game is kind of going forward we're going to be like all tied in with the story because it meant like they could do like you know each game didn't kind of matter in a way if you got what i mean mm. not that each game didn't matter but like Hmm. Each game story was progressing towards the same ending. Right. There's like, like, now, like, there's, there's, like there's a purpose for everything, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly, like, right? But, I don't mind. I don't mind the overlapping stories, but you have yeah. to be consistent with it. Modern Warfare Cold War, good job, guys. You know, you're tying everything together here. Things are slowly, you know, making the greater puzzle together you know it's kind of interesting here and then vanguard comes out comes out vanguard comes out and what what the, what, what where are we now what's happening i think <laughs> i think a part of the issue is that there's no structure to when the games are released thing like if they want this to work better then it should have been it should have been vanguard first then cold mm. war then modern warfare um, obviously it's so hard because like i'm sure the all the developers are like you know acknowledging what games and that they're going to work on but I think I think the reason that the only reason that this happened is because then they've covered each like era of games and the next game is going to be obviously Modern Warfare 2. Then mm. Black Ops, when it comes out in a few years, will be a future setting because they want to cover sure. all the grounds for this new story, even if they choose to continue it with Black Ops, which they will. Um, I don't see the Microsoft deal really changing a lot of the stuff they work towards. Not really. But at the same time, man, I think that's what it comes down to. I think it's because like a story should progress, and the story's gone backwards in a way. Like, think about it. You're going from Modern Warfare to yeah. Cold War to Vanguard. Don't get me wrong. I think Cold War story, Cold Cold War, Cold Cold War story was, you know, I think it multiplayer story wise was a lot more interesting than anything Modern Warfare was, you know, producing. Um, no, absolutely. I definitely liked Cold War story yeah. more than Modern Warfare's. That's yeah, just my personal right. opinion. Yeah, um, but I think I think in general, them trying to go backwards, and I know it's not the studio's fault. They were probably told, "Oh yeah, you're making a World War II game." Um, but like, I don't know. I don't think it helps them. I really don't like because the, the thing Sledgehammer have made good campaigns before and good games. Ma say what you want about Advanced Warfare, but it has some of the best maps in COD. Well, well, here's the thing. The problem is. And this goes back to, you know, should Vanguard have even been released, right? Like yeah. There, there are a lot of people who just genuinely believe Vanguard should not have been released. I mean, there are some good arguments out there. I'm not going to yeah. I'm not gonna say they're not good arguments. I think there are a lot of good arguments out there. But the problem here is, too, it all, it all goes back to the marketing of the game, too. Nobody wanted another World War II game, right? Yeah, it's been so overdone. Because like, like, we had, what do we have? We had Battlefield 1. And I know this isn't called like just called. We're looking at all games kind of releasing. Mm. We have Battlefield One, which is obviously you know, World War One, right? But still, mm. kind of, I say it feels so it's kind of like the same, right? Because mm -hmm. I feel like when you play a World War One game, World War Two game, a lot of the same guns are There's, used, and you know, yeah. you know, it's similarities, right? Like you know, them them games are going to feel the most similar as they should, right? And then obviously you had Battlefield, you had World War Two come out, even then mm. you had Battlefield Five. And then obviously we had Vanguard, and we all obviously we all thought that Battlefield 2042 was going to be the the COD killer. <laughs> I mean that was just, I mean that was just weird. I mean Battlefield 2042 had a lot of potential, and then it just was dead on arrival. I mean I um, remember us talking like, oh yeah, we're gonna play, we're gonna play the game so much, we're gonna buy the oh, game. Oh, I mean here's the thing, I was I was looking forward to it. I was looking forward to trying something new, and then when I saw all the problems with it, it's like, do I want to play a worse version of Vanguard? Like, like no, no, <laughs> no, I don't. I mean, go go play Battlefield Four. 
You know, yeah. like I, I like Battlefield well. Four. I haven't played exactly. it in years, but I like Battlefield Four. It's a good um, nostalgic game, but like, yeah, I mean, yeah. It, <laughs> but you know, the I, thing is, you know, back to just Vanguard, and nobody yeah. wanted a World War Two shooter. You know, that really dampened a lot of people's perspectives on this game already. Combined with all the issues at launch, and still have, by the way, barely any of them are fixed. Um, combined with all that, the story doesn't make any sense. Like you have this recipe for disaster that, like, with 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 Cold War and Modern Warfare, Call of Duty was starting to go in that interesting new direction. And you know, the Cold War and you know, really getting some lore here, really getting some interesting crossover lore and how zombies ties into all this too. And some of the characters that you see, and it's interesting. And then of course, Vanguard came out and we just don't know what's happening anymore. But the yeah. main, the main thing is the main thing is people. Number one, didn't want a world war two game already. And number two, if people were willing to give it a try, like me, I honestly don't mind if we get a world war two game, as long as it's done right. Um, then this just was not handled very well at all. Uh, so yeah, I mean, there's that, I guess, but you know, operation Monarch for what it's worth. I mean, I guess operation Monarch is something what, that what? I think we, we have to treat separately to this whole thing. Uh, yeah. mainly because it's, it's just an event. It's just an event and nothing is super game breaking about this event either. Unlike Krampus, which was, Probably the worst thing they ever oh, did. Oh, God. Uh, yeah. And add that. I mean, you're talking about that event was probably the worst event they've had. Um, I mean, whereas with this event, big... they definitely learned from that because yeah, they literally made it its own LTM instead of Krampus was in every single game mode and, you know, you couldn't avoid him. And, you know, it was just so stupid. You know, at least they learned from that and they made Operation I... Monarch a little bit better. But mm -hmm. I, at this point, I think we just got to treat it a little bit separately, a little bit, not a lot because it's still in the overall Call of Duty conversation and collective, but a little bit yeah. separately because it's Godzilla and King Kong. Like it, like what? <laughs> I mean, yeah, I know. Right. And I, I think back, I remember how annoyed you were when Krampus was, was the, like, you can, you can play without the being there. Thing. Worst thing ever because you're just a bullet spot. <laughs> yeah. You're so goofy as well. Like it was a it was a cool idea, but it was just a it was just fucked. Like honestly, like man, they they should have made it as like like you said a limited time, like you know its own separate game mode, and they've yeah. done that with Godzilla and King Kong, and that's pretty cool. And again, like you're saying, I think we have to we have to appreciate it for what it is. It's absolutely fine. Yeah, but that's about that's about it. Like it's not bad. It's not like Krampus because it's not like oh I can't enjoy the game I like anymore. Yeah. When something like that's thrown in where it completely fucks the game flow and like makes it so it doesn't play how like the game should normally play, that's like I don't know. I feel like you're stepping into like the wrong territory kind of there. Mm -hmm. Um with doing stuff like that. Like well, especially with something like 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 a Krampus where it's not like a gun or you know, an over overpowered DLC gun or something like that, or right. some weird glitch you can do. Um it's just Krampus and yeah, <laughs> I hope they never never try that again. But, um, the, other, the other problem with Krampus too is just the fact that um, the, it, it it was literally false marketing too for what it was supposed to be. So it was supposed to be Krampus goes after the person with the lowest objective score, right? So people try to like play the objective or whatever in whatever game mode you're playing, but that just straight yeah. up didn't work, and he just targeted random people. Like it, it, it that, that, that's mean. what made it even more insufferable, where. I mean, it, it was just ridiculous. It was honestly I feel like I'm glad we're, we're away we're, from that. Yeah. And again, they definitely learned from their mistakes. And I think that's definitely something we're bringing up um, for yeah. the limited time modes. It, yeah, it may, you know, they've learned from their mistakes. Um, I think, I think the marketing just need to like, I don't know, man. Like, cause they, they <laughs> show things that just aren't in the game. Like, you know what I mean? Godzilla and King Kong as of right now don't fight. So why show them like almost like colliding, you know? Right. What what is the actual Cause, point? Because the funniest thing that? is too, right? When you go into the game and you see like the rewards and whatever, right? You have the calling cards and like the emblems and whatever that all allude to them fighting. So you have uh, the emblem Team Kong and Team Godzilla, and it's like, okay, what's what's this like team thing? Like what what's going on here? Because they don't fight. It. Yeah, I, I don't know. They don't, it's they weird. don't even interact. They don't interact with each other. Like it, it that's why. 
it looks yeah. like they would just be both angry in their own little bit. Like, you know what I mean? Well, they, see, they, this they, is why, that's the, that's the main reason why a lot of people, like you were saying earlier, think there's more to it. Because th these people are thinking, oh, well, you know, they're not there to fight each other. They're there to fight something else. And maybe Mecha Godzilla, maybe Mothra or whatever other monster from the monster verse. But, you know, in their own blog post, and this is another thing that people were mentioning too, that potentially means that they're doing something different with this event. Uh, it says in the blog post that they're both protector titans. Was I, I guess that's a thing in the monster verse where you have types of monsters. And, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, because they, yeah, so they're Godzilla's, both protectors, yeah. and they are both at the island for some reason. And they and the article is all like, "Well, you know, did they go there because of one another, or did they go there for something else?" And maybe a lot of people are thinking because they worded it that way in the article, maybe like, people think there's something happening. But I, but if, the thing is, I don't know. I, I like you're saying. I feel like this might just be it. And if they worded it like that. I don't think it'd be Mecha Godzilla, like I, I, because I, Mecha Godzilla, I, you know, he's in the monster verse, right? But technically, I don't think he'd be classed as a monster. The only thing that I could think is, is in the movie, I'm pretty sure Godzilla pissed off the whole movie because there's some weird frequency that's drawing him to certain locations, right? Mm. And so, so they can set up Mecha Godzilla to fight him. I'm pretty sure that's the plot of it. Um, so that's why I could think maybe he's there. But again, huh. it's like if King Kong and Godzilla seen each other, you think they would fight, like you know, just naturally, right? Because they can see each other, like they're big enough to see each other. Like it's not like oh, there's a tree in the way and he can't see. No, <laughs> there's they can a tree in the way. <laughs> you know, no, no, no. The way. There's, there, there's a big mountain there at peak at, on Caldera. No, no, King Kong can't see around the mountain. That's what it is. And he can't hear. He can't hear Godzilla roaring. Or he can't no. see the big beam of light getting shot no, in his mouth. You know? No, of course not. not. No, so that's definitely there, but I feel like it wouldn't be Mechagodzilla. But at the same time, it would. I feel like it has to be because it made a skin for him. Right. I would suggest. And I think going from this, right, how how far do you think they'll go with these events? Like, <laughs> yeah, okay, I, I know Godzilla and King Kong. Like, how are they going to one-up this? Look, what? all I got to say, I know Fortnite already did a Star Wars thing, but all I got to say is if, like, if they do some Star Wars thing and the Death Star comes out of hyperspace... And Death Star beams Caldera, <laughs> like Listen, that. Like I, me, I, I would be okay with that. Hear me out here. The new Transformer movie is in development. Okay. Okay. How about the movie gets the trailer, fans go wild, and then Transformers X Call of Duty. You can drive mm. around vehicles and turn into robots and fight. I mean, and you can maybe be, you can be you can be jets. You can you can be a jet to be like a Decepticon. I mean, honestly, this sounds like a great event because then you actually get to do something. You I know, mean, you can transform into. I listen, guess. I I think it'd be a. I think they should hire me because that'd be an amazing event. I guarantee people would have every a lot vehicle that. on Caldera is a transformer, and you can transformer transform into something. What's, <laughs> what's the goofiest vehicle? There's there's boats on Caldera, isn't there? There is, uh, isn't there? There's, there's there not? No, no, there's not. I'm, no, thinking, there's, I'm thinking of Cold War. I'm thinking well, of Cold there's, War. There's there's motorcycles. There's jeeps. There's sedans. There's military trucks. There's jets. There's helicopters. Um, bro, the motorbike, the, the, the motorbike could be underpowered. I mean, that'd be no. the worst transformer. But speed, think. Listen, honestly, I think it'd be a great event. Transformers X Call of Duty, absolutely. Yeah, and same with like, same with like anything like else. Like you know, if they were to do something like Star Wars, how mm -hmm. sick would that be? I mean, hey, <laughs> I mean, I know Fortnite's got that Star Wars thing under wraps though, just because um, you know, they they already had a previous Star Wars event. They did that with the Rise of Skywalker. Uh, and then now they're doing, they're bringing back lightsabers. I saw the other day, and they're going to be adding what looks like an Obi Wan Kenobi skin for Fortnite for the new Obi Wan standalone oh, show. Oh yes. So mm. I think Fortnite might have that under wraps. Uh, I don't think Call of Duty would have a Star Wars event, but you know. Oh well, there goes my, uh, there goes my idea to play as Darth Vader during that's your, uh, during in that's zombies. Your multi that's your multiverse of madness. That's right my, there. that's my multiverse <laughs> of madness. I mean, shoot. Oh, well, uh, another new, <laughs> I don't know, but when it comes to the, uh, the events, right, they, they could go bigger. I think they should try to go bigger because they would, it would benefit them to go bigger for these events. But man, I, 
I don't, I don't really know. I really don't know what's going to happen with these events from here on out. I mean, I know there are a lot of hackers out there and, you know, the people in the community that data mine and things like that suggesting that there was supposed to be a uh, Attack on Titan event with the Attack on Titan um, skins that came out. Uh, yeah. So, I don't know. Vanguard, when it comes to events in Vanguard, I don't know if we're going to be getting another one. I don't know if anything else is going to happen with that, but for Modern Warfare 2, based on the numbers, I think, for this event, because Godzilla and King Kong are two um, big influences in pop culture and just movie culture, depending on the numbers here, I think Activision would look into having bigger events for Modern Warfare 2, because I think mm. they realize people are very disillusioned with Vanguard, and, you know, Caldera, it, people don't like Caldera as much as they liked for Dansk, so... Yeah, I would definitely give them some food for thought when it comes to Warzone 2, because Vanguard's obviously the last game to be integrated with the current Warzone, and yeah, that's uh, that's that's my take on it. That's your take. So, oh well, yeah, I think so as well, and I think with them going with like a new direction for Warzone as well, I mean, it gives them the chance, but at the same time, I feel like Infinity War just want to make their own little grounded like story for their new war zone because i mm. i don't know is it going to be connected to the previous ones is it is it not going to be connected i mean i mean at this point they've established that the storylines are connected so they have to be but you know of course you can't use your operator skins that we all got from the previous three games in Warzone <laughs> 2 which is uh you know what are you gonna do i guess uh but that's a that's a bit of a I, yeah. I, I I still think that they are going to be connected storyline storyline wise because they literally have to. They already set that precedent. So you know, we'll just see what happens. I guess. I think so. <laughs> uh, what a wild time! What a wild time! What? Never, what I, wild I never time. when I uh, never when I got into Call of Duty would I expect me to be talking about. Godzilla and King Kong, or let's never when we started the podcast, I would I'd think we'd talk about Godzilla and King Kong like, and Call of Duty. Like, if you were to like time travel back and tell us, like, oh, <laughs> yeah, King Kong and Godzilla fight in, in a big battle royale game mode in Call of Duty, we'd be like, stop lying. Come on. <laughs> I, I mean, mean, you can talk about, look, you can talk about Zombies Chronicles too, something realistic that's going to happen, but come on, not Godzilla. Oh, yeah, I know, of course. Kong. Zombies that's, Chronicles that's 2 coming out tomorrow. For Cold tomorrow, War. And it has Transit Diaries buried remastered in 4K. I mean, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm convinced, obviously. I mean... Honestly, and listen, you know, the source... I, trust me, bro. Trust me, bro. Trust me. Yeah, trust that's me, the bro. source. That's a good source. I, that's a pretty reliable I've source. I've played it. I've played it on my PS3. Come on. <laughs> Actually, I, speaking of sources, I think this would be good to talk okay. about as well. <laughs> for, um... You know, Modern Warfare 2 and touch oh, a little yeah. bit on that. Um, I think a lot of you out there know Sensor, the uh, Call of Duty pro out there currently with Boston Breach. Uh, he was on a live stream recently, and I think this is very newsworthy because I think this may might have a lot of people worried about Modern Warfare 2. Uh, a lot of these people are seeing early footage, and a lot of these things are being leaked to a lot of the players. And Sensor uh, said that his inside source... Um, says that Modern Warfare 2 is terrible. So, mm, uh, I I don't know how it's terrible. You know, you know what you that. You know, yes, go ahead. I don't know, man. Is it going to be is it going to be terrible? Yeah. If 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 a so if if what a so-called reliable source for a Call of Duty yeah. Pro is telling the Call of Duty Pro this game sucks. Is it, you know, what, what can we gather from this? Do you think the community should listen to this or do you think we should just brush it off and wait for the alpha and the beta and maybe the trailers and things um, like that? Well, I mean, like, I guess it's anyone's personal opinion. Like mm. if, if they want, I mean, cause obviously no one knows, right? Of course. Except this inside source that's trusted. So I guess it's whether you want to listen to them or not. Right. I think with card games nowadays, you shouldn't buy them as soon as they come out. I think you need to wait. Obviously, I'm going to buy it because I'm a content creator and I play video yeah. games, you know, and all that. So I'm going to buy it anyway. Um, but I think for the average person that like just plays the game, I think it's one of the things we're going to have to wait because I mean we've been disappointed before with COD. I, I yeah. Black Ops Four Zombies. The leaks for that game was that the de development was going terrible, right? Before the game even came out, like, this was these were leaks we were getting. We're like the studios in shambles trying to make these like these maps and stuff. Yeah. Um, I mean, with 
with Modern Warfare 2, I know there's a new mechanic that has been leaked again, you know, by trusted source. So, you know, take that with a pinch of salt. Um, yeah. But, um, yeah, I, I mean, I don't know. I think Modern Warfare 2 is going to be the, one of the biggest games of all time for sales, at least, because, you know, Modern Warfare, that's one thing. But hearing Modern Warfare 2, like, that's that's quite big, you know? Maybe. I mean, I guess when it comes to the sales, time will tell. But yeah, I yeah, I think I think as well as like is um, I mean, you look at Modern Warfare, it's not not like that game was received that well. I know a lot of people like it and play it and enjoy it, but right. I mean, we all have the same issues. Really fast cut time to kill. Maps have safe spaces. You know, spam sliding doors. You know, all that stuff. Yeah, and people I... didn't like that. But the thing is, as well, is that Modern Warfare has such a community behind it, right? Yeah. So maybe, maybe it's like the vocal minority that hate it. But you see, when it comes to people that actually play the game and like, like the large minor, like minority of people. Uh-huh. I think maybe they actually enjoy it, and that's what Infinity Ward are going to look at in terms of numbers and stuff. Um, I mean, I don't know, man. It's again, it's definitely such a like. It's a question mark. It, I mean, yeah. Look at Vanguard Zombies. Disappointment. Look yeah. at Black Ops Four. I know we're talking about more like zombies and that. Look at Black Ops Four Zombies. Mm-hmm. You know, it wasn't that you know well received at launch. You know, right. And even like going back to Ghost. Ghost was such a hype game. People were so hyped for Ghost, and obviously Ghost came out. And then it was like, okay, it's a good game and I enjoy it, but people hate it, right? For whatever reason. <laughs> right. For whatever reason. Not the bad maps or the, the fast time to kill or like the, the fact the game isn't really that stable. Um, but no, it's it's a thing that's happened with COD. But don't get me wrong, sometimes you're going to get a nice little surprise. Like look at Infinite Warfare Zombies. People mm-hmm. had no faith in that whatsoever. People thought it was going to be absolutely awful. Yeah, before but, it came out, you're not wrong. Yeah, so it's one of the things. But then again, you know, I think wait and see for yourself as always. But if the source is saying that it's a trash game, I guess it's whatever his opinions are. Like, do you like Modern Warfare 2019? Mm-hmm. If he didn't, maybe that's why he doesn't like this one and thinks it's the worst. Maybe. Maybe. I mean, hey, uh, I, I just thought I'd bring that up real quick because it is, I think it is newsworthy because. Well, absolutely. If, 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 if these insider people are already saying that the game is bad. You know, that that could be a red flag, potentially, potentially. We haven't seen any gameplay. We haven't seen any trailers. We All we've seen is a freaking logo. Uh, so maybe this could be a really good game. Maybe this could be a really bad game. Um, but all I know is that my expectations are pretty low uh, just because of what happened with Vanguard, obviously, and the, the development cycle yeah. of what's been happening recently. Um, and then also Modern Warfare, uh, on the other hand, is really not my cup of tea when it comes to Call of Duty. Like, it's not a bad no. game. No, you know, I just all. I just don't like doors and, like you were mentioning, the super campy areas. And it's just annoying. It's just really, really annoying. But, um, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. the, I, I don't know. I, I just, mean, at the end of the day, right? You know, obviously, we want it to be a good game, but yeah. I mean, for us, obviously, our main thing is zombies, right? And don't like, you know, don't get me wrong. And we're always kind of like, I, I, I'm not gonna say we're always gonna prefer trick games over, you know, Infinity Ward games, but like, for us at least, obviously, that's where our hearts are at. So if Modern Warfare Two absolutely is like abs- an absolutely awful game, like I'm not, I'm not gonna lose sleep over it because it's something that like just mm. happens with COD now. You know, I know that the next Black Ops game will be somewhat decent. Because they always somewhat are, even like Black Ops Four, right? They're always like decent yeah. enough. Well, you know? that's the thing, though, with with Treyarch. Yeah, you know, you call people Treyarch fanboys or Treyarch shills or whatever. Yeah. How do you, I, like, genuinely? How do you like not like Treyarch? You know, like Treyarch. They they are the studio that's been putting in the most work recently. They you know they're they're basically making Vanguard for Sledgehammer at this point, and yeah. you know. They're they're trying to work with what Vanguard gave them and what Sledgehammer is giving them, which is not a lot to begin with, and they're they're trying the best they can. Like Earth to Sledgehammer, what the hell's going on with your game? Uh, and then of course Treyarch is still adding Cold War stuff to the game for a year or two, and it's just wild. It, it's just a really really wild thing right now that Treyarch is the most overworked studio, but they they manage to consistently put out some decent stuff, you know, barring the problems with Vanguard zombies, that's not entirely their fault. Um, Mm -hmm. But it's just just crazy to me that, you know, people will just, you know, 
throw throw some shade at Treyarch where and I, I when I feel like Treyarch is a studio I feel the most bad for here, you know? Mm. I just wild. It's really, really I mean, wild. Even I mean, even looking at like like Black Ops track record, right? Mm. Like let's go to start for when they're making card games. It would have been Call of Duty two, the big red one, I think is the the first one they made. I believe so. Yes, and I think they also made um they made COD three as well, did they? I think maybe they did. Yes, yeah, they did make COD three. Yeah. And then obviously we have World at War, Black Ops, Black Ops Two, Black Ops Three, Black Ops Four, yeah, uh, Black Ops Cold War. We have some parts of Warzone. I'm pretty sure they worked on as well. Oh, every and, studio's and, touched on Warzone yeah. at some point. And I'm seeing here, <laughs> I'm seeing here that I'm pretty sure Treyarch worked on a lot of the ports for the Wii and the Wii U for games. So yes, even they did. games that yeah, even games that like they didn't even make, they still made them. Yeah. <laughs> so they've they've just always been put to work. <laughs> they don't. They really they don't get have time off so like it it's kind of sucky for them they make good games and stuff but like just give them like 10 years to make a good game you know what i mean honestly give, give them a 10, 10 year development make... cycle and see what happens honestly the best zombie game of all time because they're not going to be rushed and it could be in a nice relaxed environment there so they go. can actually take time and you know have fun ideas i don't know try it get out 10... <laughs> Get Ted Studios. Get Ted yeah. Studios to make Ted. <laughs> well, here's the thing. There's there's so many studios working on Call of Duty right now. I think a lot of people who maybe see Call of Duty as more of the mainstream kind of a game um, don't necessarily see the studios behind the scenes that yeah. also work on Call of Duty. So, like, you know, for example, it's not just Treyarch, Infinity Ward, Sledgehammer. You have Toys for Bob. You have Demon Wear. You have the Activision Shanghai yeah, studio. Beanox. Like, Raven Software. I mean, I, I feel like more people know about Raven Software, though, because of Warzone. But, like, still, still, there's so many more studios sure. that are all over the place in Call of Duty. And, you know, people don't really realize that. Uh, and, by the way, Toys for Bob, and the, and one of the support studios for Call of Duty, just ma made the new Gulag for Operation Monarch. Or not Operation Monarch, but just for, um, just for Caldera for Season 3 in general. So, there's there's more going on for a lot of these studios. I know it's really easy to put the blame mm -hmm. on, uh, on one particular studio, which to be fair. Yeah. You probably should put the blame on a particular studio, especially if it's like, let's say sledgehammer with Vanguard, because they're the main developer. That is their game. It is a sledgehammer production. It says right there when you boot up the game. So it is very warranted to give them the backlash and to give them the criticism and, and to give them all that. Right. We also got to keep in mind, yeah that there are so many studios out there trying the best they can with what they're given. And I think that's part of the reason why maybe a lot of this is so strange. And a lot of this doesn't seem so cohesive because all this work isn't not necessarily being outsourced because they're all under the same blanket of Activision, mm -hmm. but it's all being just spread out in so many different areas that, you know, when, when is too much expansion, too much expansion? Because if, um, Sledgehammer, because they've been expanding all over the world, opening many offices. What's the point? What's the point of you opening so many offices if if the product we're getting is Vanguard? Are they working on something else that's not Vanguard related? And so they have to like expand that or just leaving Vanguard to die while so many people who want to play Call of Duty experience all these problems and they don't want to update their game because they're working on something else? Like what's like the, I guess the main thing is we want clarity. Is, I think that's the main problem. We need clarity from Sledgehammer. And the studio that, once again, has been the most transparent and the one that has talked to the community the most is Treyarch. You know, I all these people before Vanguard came out, oh my god, Sledgehammer is so good at communicating with the fans. Where are they? Where are they? Besides, like... I know why. It's because they are making a game they don't want to make. I, I, I think it's that. Maybe, I yeah. I have roped into making a World War II shooter. Because obviously they wanted to make Cold War, first of all, and that changed last minute. True. And then they were like, okay, make this game. You made a World War II game before, and people liked it. Do it again. I mean, maybe. That could be definitely the case. That's what makes sense to me, at least. Like, that's what I think. Obviously, I could be wrong like anything. Maybe they really did want to make another World War II game. And I, I don't know. You know, it's really hard to tell because... it's. You have, the, you have the writers of Vanguard at that panel. They want to make, three, they they want to make, make Vanguard games. 2 and Vanguard 3, which, like, I don't know I, about that one, I, guys, I, I after know, what's I happened. Don't, I don't know. I don't know why, but I have a shocking, a shocking um, feeling that a, a, Vanguard, a Vanguard 2 is probably not going to happen. Yeah, probably I think, I think, not after this. 
I think we're more likely to get like Ghost 2 or Infinite Warfare 2, which are deserved titles to get a sequel. Dude, but. we're more likely to get Extinction 2 back, Bruh. which segues perfectly into the next topic. Lee Ross confirmed uh, that Extinction 2 was in development for Infinite Warfare before they that, decided to go with zombies. What do you think that, about that? Uh, I know you love Extinction. Feel, yes, yes. That fills me with joy, and it also makes me all rip, rip my heart out because <laughs> we were so close to having the perfect game mode to take over the zombie the zombie and fandom and people would have loved extinction too um he even says that some like the like the pre-alpha builds of the game mode were like you could there is so much like building in that involved mm. i could absolutely imagine like the excitement and fun of the game mode and i'm really curious on where they were going to take the story coming off exodus like man i fuck it's sad because i know extinction is something we'll never get again we'll never sure. get it again like a hundred percent like maybe maybe in a future Infinity Ward game we'll get it as like a little like um oh here's a reference or like maybe in a map they yeah. make in the future. I mean the be Beast from cryptid. Beyond is literally an example of that. You have the cryptids in the map. Yeah, and honestly with like extinction and the storyline, I don't class Beast from Beyond Canon at all. I I just don't. <laughs> it's I mean, better it when not. you leave it the way it is. Yeah, it's, it's it ruins the, the story, story of extinction. Yeah, it ruins the ex- it ruins the whole like extinction story that was there. And it's important just to kind of ignore it. And wow. yeah, so honestly, <laughs> if they made Extinction 2, I would be so happy. But obviously that didn't happen. So, And if Infinite Warfare would have been a good game to do it on. But like, I mean, Extinction 2 or uh, Infinite Warfare Zombies, I think I would take Extinction 2. Um, just because I like Extinction and I actually like, I really enjoy it. Interesting. But I know, I know the majority of the community would have went for the zombies. I just feel like it's yeah, good for them to try other stuff, which isn't zombies, you know. I think yeah. Aliens was a good idea, even though technically, technically they aren't aliens. But you know, I mean, you know, they basically are at this point. I mean, <laughs> I mean, uh, you no. Know, yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's whatever you know what kind of creature terminology there are they part of the monster verse too <laughs> add them in I, add in add in the add the, add the crack and add, add, add all that kind of stuff why not right yeah but i mean you know as someone who didn't really play a lot of extinction before uh I, I, it would have been really interesting to see a sequel to that i think you know it was a unique game mode for what it was worth um i only ever played the first map so i don't know how the other ones play uh, oh, they're absolutely epic, and they all have amazing boss fights. Oh so yeah, they they are absolutely incredible. Like honestly, man, it. I think the biggest issue is some of that replay value, but you have that there in some aspects because you have to grind teeth to like make your character super overpowered. Okay. So there's like a grinding system in it where you can just keep going back and playing and playing and getting rewarded for the time so you play in it. So is it kind of like the the Ethereum crystals for Cold War? Yeah, in a way, but you get like a lot better upgrades. Mm, um, okay. Like for example, you know how you have your classes in Cold War? Yeah. And you have your you have your classes and ghosts? Well, yeah. essentially you can have two classes at once if you unlock this like really overpowered one. Ooh. So it, that'd be like having Ether Shroud and um I don't know, like um energy mine at the same time. Wow. That would be you know really I mean? cool like, actually. Yeah, like they it did stuff like that and it made the game a lot more like replayable and fun because you could go back and feel like you're earning stuff. And yeah, man, oh. it's just a shame. It's honestly just a shame because Extinction, like mm. some of the designs and stuff for their, like, like obviously the cryptids, ugh, they mm. look so good, man. And uh, it makes me angry that we didn't get a sequel. But Extinction will always be something that I hold near and dear to my heart. And you know mm. what? I'm going to enjoy it for what it is and what we have. And yeah, honestly, we, we I know we say it all the time, but we need to play more games together and we need to play Extinction. We need to play <laughs> Extinction together is what we need to play, man. I mean, freaking... I'd love to give this another shot because Honestly, I went yeah. back and I gave Infinite Warfare Zombies another shot earlier in the year, and I really like Infinite Warfare Zombies now. So you know what? If I give if I give Extinction a try and give that a shot, play the first map again. What was it called? Point of Contact. Point of Contact. Um, yes. I give Point of Contact another try and all those other maps. Maybe I'll really like it. Maybe I'll oh, yeah. stream some more of it. I mean, I don't know. Just, we'll see what happens, man. I mean, there's always uh, there's always something cool to do. I guess when it comes to content, right? Absolutely, man. I mean, it's just about finding it, you know. And extinction is definitely something that's just worth playing. Like, yeah. Even if you just play Point of Contact, you know, it's an experience, and I would recommend anyone to play for each map once. 
just so mm-hmm. you know you've played it because it's some of the best like I think yeah with ghosts I understand the hate but if you fully played the game and like you know the campaign all the extinction maps and you know if you got a chance to play the DLC maps when they're populated yeah. your opinion would be different I think I, I honestly think that because that was like the biggest issue with ghosts was the maps for you know multiplayer the rest of the game was pretty solid in my opinion mm. um but no, I mean, like, yeah, campaigns are normally good with, like, Infinity Ward. I think we can all agree in that, that their campaigns are normally quite, yeah, they're not quite bad. good. Not bad at all, no. Um, but yeah, no, honestly, man, Ghost, Extinction. Oh, I would just like to see gameplay of it, to be honest. I'm so <laughs> curious. I, you know, well, you know, you know just go ahead and uh, message Lee Ross, and maybe he'll give you some gameplay. <laughs> yeah, he, he actually has. He actually has finished gameplay of Extinction 2 that they're in pre-alpha of, and, they, you know, it's in 4K. And mm. honestly, oh, man, course. listen, it's a giant open world experience. Right. And, you know, it's, yeah, honestly, man. Right. Yeah, I, no, I that's, that's it. the, that's the rumor DMZ mode for, for Modern Warfare 2, right? That's, yeah, that's, that's what it, it is. It's just Extinction 2. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, 100%. Which, right. um, I mean, hey, if, if Extinction were to come back in any capacity, I'd give it a shot. Uh, but of course, like I you're would... saying, I don't think we'd be getting it anymore. No. Um, nah. I mean, but, it sounds yeah. a simple fact. It didn't make yeah. enough sales. Yeah. That's it. It it did yeah. it did make enough sales. Um, for sure. I think I think some of the developers that worked on the game mode after it even said like it's just it was because like you know they're really mm-hmm. passionate about the game mode and it was a fun game mode for them to work on, but it just didn't you know do as well as zombies. And then Activision was like, nah, not worth it. Yeah, but it's one of those things where like you can't expect something to take off instantly. Right. Well, see that's you the thing have- that that that's always been Activision's like main model: money now, money now, money now, money now. Right. And that's why we've had this COD cycle every year. Money now, money now, money now. And with Warzone and the integrations and all that, they kind of switched up that formula, but they made the money now a little bit differently, where it's money now with bundles, money now with battle pass, money now with, uh, you know, little cosmetics you buy with COD points. So, um, you know, I, I think it all just goes back to Activision's business model of money now. <laughs> I like money. There you go. There you go, yeah, Mr. I mean, Krabs. That's, that's what it is, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if Mr. Krabs was the, was the Mr. Krabs, was the next operator? Chairman. Next operator. <laughs> Dude, next operator in Vanguard. He snips your arm off. You go pick up a penny <laughs> and he, he snips your arm off because you pick oh, up good. a penny. That's funny. <laughs> I mean, uh, at this point, man. man, nothing would surprise me. At nah, this point. Me either. Nothing would surprise no. me. No. I God. mean, hey, if they can if they can get Nickelodeon to collaborate with the NFL and broadcast some football games on and on Nickelodeon and have all their like Nickelodeon cartoon characters doing whatever on the football field, Call of Duty could surely do that too, right? I mean, I wouldn't be surprised Ima- at this point. <laughs> Imagine that. Imagine they did um like the whole like um like stadium thing. Obviously, we know like the the famous um when you know Squidward's band all comes together and right. plays at the game. I'm mad. If they do that in Warzone, I think people would lose their shit. <laughs> I think people would absolutely love it. I mean, here's the thing. They they lost the opportunity because there was a stadium in Verdansk. Verdansk is no longer playable, so you know, they, they kind of lost that opportunity there. No more, no no sweet victory there for, for Activision and Warzone. Yeah. <laughs> no, absolutely. Like, it, uh, it's a, a shame. Honestly, all the Spongebob crossovers, you could have the chocolate guy. Chocolate. Of course. Chocolate. And that could be him. He could be Krampus. No. That could be it. That could be it. You could randomly get a bar of chocolate mm. thrown at you by another player and the chocolate guy comes and gets you. I, I would uninstall the game. Oh, but... <laughs> uninstall the game. Jesus I would uninstall the game. <laughs> I, Seriously, I, though, if they ever implemented some kind of Krampus thing ever again to Warzone or to Vanguard or any future Call of Duty, I'm straight up not playing for the season. I hope like, they add it into the next Warzone exactly like this one. And I hope it's forced. I swear. I swear. And I hope I hope you go back to like like Black Ops 2 and he's in there for some reason. <laughs> uh you know. You know. <laughs> I mean, hey, you know what? Call of Duty, what a what a weird time it is to be a fan, but at the same time. Um, we can only hope for the best at this point, right? Absolutely. Well, I guess that about wraps things up here for this episode where, uh, we talked about Operation Monarch, talked about mm-hmm. some Modern Warfare 2 leaks, talked about the, uh, canceled extinction too. 
And, uh, yeah, I think some pretty decent topics today. What do you have to say before we wrap things up? Any final thoughts? Uh, Extinction 2, it's probably never going to happen. But if it did, I would like, I, I would honestly be so happy. Obviously, mm-hmm. it's not going to happen, though, because money. Um, mm, you know. A King Kong event, you know, it was fun. That's about it. And yeah. hopefully for next week, and I say hopefully, I mean it, uh, we'll have face cams back, and you'll hey. no longer see the K-Cosmic old setup. You'll see the the new revamped gaming Ooh. room. So so looking forward to that, and hopefully I have better better internet. So we'll have All to right wait and then. see. We'll have to wait and see. If it's worse, I think I'll be really upset, but we'll have to wait and see. <laughs> well, you know, it all sounds well, very promising. I'm excited to see your new setup. And, Perfect. Uh, yeah, man. I guess that's about it for episode 89 of the Division Z podcast. 89. That's a big number. What was your favorite part yeah. about this episode? Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments. Make sure you check out all the links down below in the description so you stay up to date with everything that we do. Also, check out the link down below for Stack Up. Of course, once again, we are teaming up with Stack Up, the veterans charity this year, to raise money for veterans who need it through the power of gaming. And, um, you know, the. The event's coming up soon, you know, June 3rd. June 3rd is going to be a fun day, I think. Um, I, I'm just looking forward to raising money again. We've already had a few people donate. Really, really appreciate those who have. And um, the donation link will be open for the entirety of 2022. So um, until the clock strikes midnight on uh, January 1st, 2023, you know, then uh, that's, of course, when the link ends. But the entirety of 2022, you can donate. And if you missed the event and you wanted to donate, don't worry about it. Any amount helps, of course, if you if you can donate. So, yeah, you know, really, really happy to be partnered up with uh, Stack Up Again for Veterans. So I guess with that Absolutely. said, guys, thank you again for watching. And uh, we'll see you all next week. And hopefully we'll see Cosmic's new setup next week. We will do, <laughs> hopefully. All right, then. Peace out. Bye, everyone.